Howdy folks, we're back at you again with another Godot video. Today we're going to be doing animations uh, on our player here. Uh, last we left it, our player was just a static image. So if we play our game over here, our player just sort of moves around. Um, and so today we're going to work on that, adding an animation. Um, and hopefully it won't take too long. So let's go ahead and do that. So here is our uh, player character here in a scene. And uh, I have a sprite 2D attached, which was what we were working on before. Um, and it's just in our sprites folder there. Uh, but we want to take this image from our A sprite here, which is animated. And we animated it in several different ways. We have a walking animation. Zoom out, see a little better there. And we have a jumping animation. And I even put an attack animation, which was not your homework, but we got that done. And you can see I've split the animations here by these animation tags here. Those will be useful today. If you haven't done that, um, you'll have to export different animations. But the nice thing about the animation tags is it keeps it all in one file. So we're going to export this as a sprite sheet as we've practiced before export sprite sheet we want to make sure we've checked this output file button once the output file button is uh, set then it'll export into the same folder as uh, your a sprite file is saved in um, but we also if you've done the tags want to come into here in sprite sprite options and you want to split the tags. Otherwise, it'll just export the one tag. Um, in, if you select split tags, you, see, you can see it's been splitting the tags into rows, one for each one of the uh, animations that we had. So once that's all set, we can hit export. I already have done it. Uh, sure, why not? We'll do it again. Uh, and then we can go grab that same file. Here it is in my art folder here animation the png and we're just going to grab that and put it into our sprites folder over here do, do, do. and now we have the sort of grid of ones there but it's not going to work the same way as a sprite so you know what we might as well just delete -late that sprite we don't need it anymore the collider stays there and instead of a sprite we're going to add another child node here and we're going to add the animated sprite tile uh node I'll add that there. I'll put it on top of or underneath the collider so we can see it. And we are going to create an animation for these. So same way as we create tile sets, you click on the animation here, you click on here, and then you say we're going to make new ones there. And then we go down to our animation uh, at the bottom. Nope, sorry, you got to click on the sprite frames first. Ah, there we go. Uh, so click on the sprite frames, just like the tile set there, and we have to set which animation. So I'm going to start, I'm going to rename this animation to an idle animation. And then looking back at a sprite here, we have idle, walk, jump, and attack. So let's load all those ones in as new animations here. So F2, change the title, and we're going to do walk. We're going to do another one. That one's going to be called jump. It doesn't matter the order here because we're just going to Pick them all as we go and attack. Okay, they just alphabetize them. All right, so let's start with our idle animation. Okay, we have no, no frames for our animation here, and you'd think you could just drag this in, but no, that won't work at all. So we're going to slice it up using this weird waffle button. This will make a lot of sense uh, when we click on it. This is our slicer. Find the correct folder where we put it. And we're going to take the files there, hit open. And now, it has like the waffle pattern, right? So we're going to slice it into these various animations. So this is the idle animation. That's the one selected right here. And I think we had six frames across. And we got four high. That's perfect. And the idle animation is this first one here. It does it in order that it was set in a sprite. So I'm going to click on the frames I want for the idle animation. Add those six frames for the idle. And we can even play it and see how it looks. There's my little idle animation there. Perfect. Okay, pause that, and then I'm going to do the same thing now for my walk animation, which was the second one down there. There's my walk animation, add those six frames, and 
do the jump animation, which is the third one, and then the attack animation. Again, the attack animation I just did because I wanted to see how it looked. Oh, see it? It looks cool. Yeah, it's got a little shock wave from its fins as it attacks. Neat. Okay, so we have those animations all set to go. They're fine. Uh, the collision may be a bit too forward. Pull that in. Uh, and so let's go ahead and go to our scene here and see if it animates. It's totally good. It totally does it. Okay, so why? It's because we haven't told it to start yet. So simplest way to do that there, go back to your animated sprite there and click on your idle. And the idle one is the one you want it to start with. And just click this button here that says A autoplay. Because that will autoplay the animation when the game starts. So here we go. And you can see I'm now animated on the screen. Perfect. That's what I wanted. Except it doesn't show my jump animation or my walk animations. I haven't coded an attack in, but it doesn't do that either. So that has to be done through code. Just adding that simple idle animation, though, is, is huge. It makes a really big difference um, in your game, just having a little bit of forward movement um, in the game, in the scene, so it doesn't look super static, but we're going to have to work a little bit harder for the next part. Okay, so we are going to add a... We already have the script, so let's go to our script for our character body here. And... What we're going to have to do is put in some different kinds of triggers for when it knows that it has to animate and trigger the different kinds of animations. Um, I'm just using triggers. Colloquial, that's not what, actually what they're called. And I'm also going to show you a different way to do this because uh, I'm going to show you how to do a custom function. So a function is a different kind of command for uh, Unity, or sorry, for Godot. And just like this one here, it starts with the command uh, physics process, and that's listening every frame. It's playing all these commands every frame of the game. Uh, and in this case, they're all if statements. So it's running these if statements every frame. That's just what a physics process or process commands do in general, process functions. I'm going to just make a quick and easy way of doing the animation function because it's nice to do things in custom functions because you can just click this little arrow here and minimize it. So when our script gets really full later, we're going to have different ways in order to um, see things more quickly because uh, it might get pretty full later. Okay, so we're going to do the uh, animations as a custom function. I just called it animations. So you can call it whatever you want. And then we use pass so it knows not to run it because if I take away the pass, it doesn't know what to do and it'll get mad at me. Okay. But we got to think about these things. I'll put pass there for now. I want it to play the idle animation by default. And it's already doing that because it's auto-playing. But here's some, like, you know, basic coding grammar we need to think of. So we need to play the jumping animation if we jump. We need to play the walking animation if we're moving. Or else we've got to play the idle animation. So when we lay out the sentence like that, I'll just write that down. Play the idle usually, but if jumping, play jump. If moving, play walk. So that's kind of the sentence that we're working on. Um, in coding, we often start with the if statements and put this at the end, and we'll say or else play idle. Well, that's the sentence we're sort of working on um, for this. So let's start with that if statement for jumping then. Okay, so I just like to put comments in my code so that I know what I'm doing here. So jump animation, that's just a comment. And we're going to start with if. Okay, so let's take a look at our physics process here and we can see where we're handling jump. Now, luckily, the built-in script tells us where jump is. So jump is if the action, the jump button is pressed and is on floor, then do the jump. And the is on floor, we learned, is trying to read where the character is. And that's just built into the script as, a, as another function. But 
we don't have to code that in, but we can use that. We can use this is on floor because why don't we just play the jump animation when we're not on the floor? So I'm gonna teach you a little quick way to say a not, and that is exclamation mark. Exclamation mark is not. And we're gonna say is on, I can see there, is on floor. So if not is on floor, then we're going to take that animated sprite that's in the same as a child of the, the of where the script is so we don't have to get it any other way and we're going to play and this is where it's super easy it already sees all our uh names that we put in for our animations because that's part of the sprites we put in so there we go so if we're not on floor the play the jump animation okay now that should technically work um but it's not going to uh, and I'll tell you why. Because this custom function we've done, well, first of all, we're passing, so we don't need to pass anymore, otherwise it wouldn't do anything. And then the other thing is, we want to run this always. We want to run our animations every frame. So the animation needs to play during the process. So we need to add this as a function during the physics process. So it also, oh, animations, so it also runs uh, just every frame. Okay, so let's try playing that there. Play our game just from our script. And there we go. Now, the problem is, it was not on floor to start with. And so immediately, it switched to my jumping animation. And it stuck there. It's stuck there because that because that was the first thing it said to do, and it never tells it to go back to the other animation. If that makes any sense. Okay, so I don't have that or else play idle. So let's try putting that in here. Else colon double tab over animated sprite 2D play idle. Let's try that. I'll see if it switches back there. So it switches to my idle. See my eyeballs pointed down there. And if I jump up, my eyeball looks up. That's pretty cool. So oh, we don't have our walk animation backwards. So we got to go back here and think a little bit about grammar again, because there's a different command we need. We could say, we would think we could say for the walk animation. I suppose I should put a comment here for the, uh, in any other case, play idle animation. So we need the walk animation. We would like say if, you know, we're probably just going to use the velocity, it's velocity dot x axis back and forth, right? That's the way we're walking. Okay. And if that's greater than zero, then we want to do the walk animation. And it likes it. Okay, let's see what happens when we play. Again, it doesn't go back to my other animation. It just keeps walking. So what we need to do is we need to change this to an elif. An elif is just else if, but it, we. So if it's on the, uh, if it's not on the floor, then play the jump animation. Or else if it, or else if, right? If it's uh, walking, then play the walk animation, right? And we got to do for the other direction as well. We do an elif velocity dot x is. The way around less than zero that's walking backwards then we want to take the animated sprite again and play backwards that's that's not playing the direction backwards that's playing the, the actual animation frames backwards you could use that i suppose for something um but it might not be what you want okay so let's see if this works now so there i am jumping jump works idle works Walking works. You can see my little flippers working on the bottom there. But as you can see, if I'm walking backwards, I, I moonwalk it. I don't go the right way. So that's not going to work. Oh, I set up a level here where I can die. 
Um, triggering my kill zone. Hopefully we covered that in class for you as well. Uh, but I'm going to have to close that down. And we are going to code a little thing that's built in, which is super cool, which is the flip. So you can take, actually we'll do that second so it makes more sense to you. I can take animated sprite dot and then as always you can you can look through all the things that come up for animated sprite and there's quite a few for animated sprite um but i'll tell you the one we want is called flip h so that's flipping on the eight the horizontal axis okay and we want to flip through so when we are walking to the left with a negative x velocity then we want to flip the animation around so let's go ahead and do that so I walk this way, it's fine. We walk the other way, it flips. But now we're stuck going the other way. Why is that? Because we never told it to flip this way. So it's got to flip back the other direction. Oops. Uh, flip H equals false. So don't flip it when you're walking to the right. Okay. There we go. Save that. I mean, it saves automatically when it plays, but I just didn't have it. Walk this way, jump works. Walk the other way, jump works. Walk this way. There we go. So now we can play my level here. And I can't make it over this pit. So that's going to be the subject of my next video, how we use animations for objects. Well, let's see you next time.